high yield facts what we are going to look at in this video so the first fact being that the most common cause of an aortic rupture in a motor vehicle accident in a motor vehicle accident so this will show an enlarged mediastinum upon what the x-ray next fact being in case of a wing scapula the question I would like to ask is which nerve is involved dash nerve so here the answer is the long thoracic nerve is the nerve which is involved in case of a wing scapula you have seen aortic rupture shows enlarged mediastinum in the x-ray in case of an accident and the wing scapula shows is an injury to the long thoracic nerve now next we are looking at the third fact which is nothing but in case the the coraco brachialis is innervated by dash so here the answer is the coracobrachialis is innervated by the musculocutaneous nerve. Next, the radial head subluxation, commonly known as what? Commonly known as the nursemaid elbow. It results due to the pulling of the child's arm. How is the child's arm pulled? While in case of extended, while extended and pronated. So a major damage is said to be done if there is an injury to the radial nerve and mainly considering its deep branch so here we are talking about the nursemaid elbow so in case of the nursemaid elbow the child's arm is extended is pulled while extended and pronated and the major damage is when the injury of the deep branch of the radial nerve is involved Next, going to the fifth fifth fact is we are looking at the wrist drop. The wrist drop occurs as a result of the damage of dash nerve. It's easy. This is the radial nerve. Next, we are looking at questions. The sixth point is in case of there's a loss of sensation. And this is sensation of the lateral aspect of upper arm. In case there is loss of sensation of the lateral aspect of the upper arm, it is caused by the what nerve injury. It is caused by the axillary nerve injury. And a common injury is seen with a fracture. The most common injury is seen along with the fracture of the surgical neck of the humerus hope this is clear next we are going to look at the fact 7 the fact 7 is the taste of the anterior two-third of the tongue is supplied by which nerve this is supplied by cranial nerve 7 which is nothing but the facial nerve now moving on to fact 8 the taste to the Posterior two third. This is the anterior one third. Posterior one third is from the CN nine. That is the cranial nine, and it is caused by the glossopharyngeal nerve. Now moving ahead with the fact number nine. The cranial nerve three and four. They are derived. They are from the midbrain 
and next the 5 6 and 7 and 8 are from the pawns next looking at the 9 10 11 and 12 they are from the medulla so we have seen that the taste of the two third of the tongue is by the facial nerve anterior two third the posterior one third is from the glossopharyngeal nerve nothing but the grom the cranial nerve nine and next we have seen that the cranial nerve three and four are from the midbrain five six seven eight are from the pons and nine ten eleven twelve are from the medulla now looking at the fact number 10 the fact number 10 tells us that there in case of an injury to the fibula neck it is the most common cause for the injury of dash nerve so the injury of the fibula nerve the injury to the fibula neck is causes damage to the peroneal nerve next looking at point 11 the majority of vitamin b12 is observed absorbed in the distal ileum so majority is absorbed in the distal ileum what is absorbed majority in the distal ileum is vitamin b12 next the common bile duct is lined is lined with cells rich in dash they are lined with cells rich in it is nothing but the alp the common bile duct is lined with cells rich in alkaline phosphatase now going ahead looking at point number 13 that is a fact number 13 it tells us that in case of uh, the superior two-third of the anal canal is from the hind, hind gut next the inferior one-third is pr from proctodome nothing but the ectoderm so to superior two-third is from the hind gut inferior one-third is from the proctodome now moving ahead with point number 14 uh, pudendal nerve block pudendal nerve block is performed by the administration of anesthetic okay but where in the ischial spine pudendal nerve block is administered by the anesthetic agent put at the ischial spine next looking at point number 15 you are looking at the hoarseness the hoarseness is a result of the injury hoarseness is the result of the injury to the recurrent laryngeal nerve which is a branch of cranial nerve 10 hoarseness of the voice is a result of the recurrent laryngeal nerve and it is a branch of the cranial nerve 10 next looking at point number 16 fact 16 the left testicular vein it drains into the left renal vein but it's at what degree it is at 90 degrees angle and the next is the right testicular vein it drains directly into the inferior vena cava this is an important concept so the left testicular vein 
it drains into the left renal vein at 90 degrees as a right testicular vein it drains directly into the inferior vena cava now looking at the next point it is the inguinal triangle we are going to talk about that the inguinal triangle is created by lateral margin of the rectus sheath this forms the medial border next the inferior epigastric vessel it forms the superolateral border and finally the inguinal ligament forms the inferior border so the easy way to remember would be i i inguinal is the inferior part next the medial and lateral are interchanged that is the medial border is formed by the lateral margin of the rectus sheath that's how you remember and then the there is nothing but the superior lateral border the only one remaining it is by the the superior lateral border is by the inferior epigastric vessel next moving on to the point number 18 the fact number 18 fact number 18 it tells us that the femoral hernias are more common in females than in males next looking at point number 19 the acl and the pcl they are named based on their attachment they are named based on their attachment to the tibia and not femur next looking at point number 20 the sciatic nerve is formed by what parts it is formed by l3 l4 s1 s2 and s3 now moving ahead with point number 21 in point number 21 we are seeing that the gastro duodenal artery runs on the posterior aspect of the first part of duodenum so the gastro duodenal artery is present at the posterior part of the first part of the duodenum next looking at point 22 there is something called the raccoon eyes next hemotympanum and next the battle sign they are all indicative of they are all indicative of fracture of the dash bone it is the temporal bone recognize next the battle sign and the hemotympanum now moving on next to the point number 23 this tells us that in case of the anterior shoulder dislocation it commonly affects the axillary nerve the most common affected nerve is nothing but the axillary nerve now looking at point number 24 the most common anterior dislocation is nothing but a direct blow and the most common cause of posterior dislocation 
is uh, tonic clonic seizure or a lightning strike so anterior dislocation it causes injury to the axillary now most common anterior dislocation is by a direct blow and the most common posterior dislocation is tonic clonic seizure or the lightning strike now looking at point number 25 point number 25 the fact it tells us that in case of an inability to dorsi flex the foot it is an injury to the dash nerve it is an injury to the common peroneal nerve inability to dorsiflex the foot 